Every time I survived a war zone, I thought I was sending a warning home. Don't do this. But here we are. There's some kind of misunderstanding here. What? Well, you're American, okay? Okay. What kind of American are you? Well, it wouldn't be modern Hollywood without a movie marketing fiasco now, would it? A24 Civil War released to less than stellar and very mixed and varied reviews. Originally marketed as a straight up war movie, the reality was anything but. So I have to ask, did everyone understand the film and what it was going for? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive into the world of A24 Civil War. We've been hearing about A24 Civil War for over a year. The first couple of trailers showed what looked to be a pretty promising fictional war movie. But then we finally got to see it and, well, our expectations were entirely subverted. First things first, let's dispense with the obvious. This is not a war movie. If that wasn't obvious to you, then you need to go back and watch this again. At its core, Civil War is a road trip movie following the same story structure as Joseph Conrad's classic novel Heart of Darkness, which, if you haven't read it, you gotta throw it on your list right away. And if reading isn't your bag, then a fairly decent adaptation, albeit in a different time period, was 1979's Apocalypse Now, which adapts the novel and changes the setting from the jungles of the Congo to the jungles of Vietnam. But does Civil War succeed in this most recent adaptation of Heart of Darkness? Let's take a look. Civil War takes place roughly 20 years in the future where America is so fractured it has gone to war against itself. The story follows a group of journalists who get clearance to interview the President of the United States before enemy forces arrive in Washington, D.C. So they go on an extremely roundabout way to get to D.C. from New York. Now, to those of you dear viewers outside of the U.S. or unfamiliar with the East Coast Atlantic states, the drive from New York to D.C. normally takes about four hours and covers a distance of around 230 miles. In the movie, the group of journalists significantly multiplies this distance to a whopping 850 miles. The film claims that's because Philadelphia is completely unapproachable. But here's the thing, you don't need to drive through Philly to get to D.C., I know I'm nitpicking a minor plot point, but it's important to note. They could have gone a shorter way, but the script needed them to take longer so that by the end, we never get that coveted interview with a president. A lot of the reviews online and on YouTube keep harping on a couple of different points. Namely, we never get any world building. Directly, they're right. There's no obvious world building taking place. But indirectly, the audience can infer quite a lot about the world of A24 Civil War. In the film's marketing and trailer, we got a map of the fractured United States in 2044 to which many critics naively thought that Texas and California would never ally as they currently hold very diametrically opposed political ideologies. And this is where director Alex Garland's European view of history and politics come into play. Alex Garland was raised in England, and if you know anything about English education, it's much more rigorous than in the U.S., for example, I know somebody who's studying history at Cambridge and has an extremely analytical view of history to a level that's not seen in the American education system. Now, I'm the product of American education, so I'm not shitting on it. I'm just saying that Alex Garland got a much more rigorous look at history. So through his lens, his interpretation of American politics and history seems fantastical and ludicrous to American viewers, but hear me out. Here's a scenario in which Texas and California could become allies. The film overtly states that this story takes place during the third term of a sitting president. This flies directly in the face of the 22nd Amendment of the United States Constitution, which states that no person can be president for more than two terms. There's a little bit of nuance here because technically there could be a situation where we could get a president in for 10 years. Hypothetically, if Joe Biden had died on January 22nd, 2023, then Kamala Harris could essentially serve out the remainder of his term, which is just under two years, and be elected twice more. But I digress. The point is that if a sitting president attempted to stay in office past his second term, this would very much lead to a constitutional crisis that could lead to secession by states that don't agree with the decision to violate the 22nd Amendment. Also, there could be a situation where three-fourths of the states vote to repeal the 22nd Amendment. 
So it's very plausible that the remaining 12 states decide to secede from the union due to this disagreement. This is very, very possible given a specific set of starting conditions, namely fierce support for the guy in power by other powerful forces. Sorry, but I had to dispel that argument that's been floating around online. Okay, now that we have the world building out of the way, what about the actual story and character development? This is where things get interesting because the themes and underlying message of the film isn't overtly political. The film explores the need for solid, independent, unbiased journalism. In the film, Kirsten Dunst plays veteran war photographer Lee Smith, who's seen her fair share of death and misery. Actual journalists like her are a dying breed. As we saw earlier this year, CNN was caught outright staging a war scene with a correspondent. This sort of blatant lying displays a complete lack of moral character in journalism in the mainstream media today. It truly is a dying profession. As I've mentioned on my channel before, the mainstream media is dying a very slow death at the hands of a massive exodus to independent media. Journalists like Jeremy Scahill, Glenn Greenwald, and Matt Taibbi are very few and far between, and Kirsten Dunst's fictional Lee Smith is a clear representation of this camp. So basically, the film's message is that current real-life mainstream media journalists are a bunch of pussies and the real hard journalists are a dying breed. Throughout the film, Lee Smith voices her regrets that despite her most diligent efforts, she failed as a journalist. In a conversation with Stephen McKinley Henderson's Sammy, she expresses genuine sadness that her life truly meant nothing because she could ultimately not bring the story back home and prevent civil war in America. Sammy reassures her that it's not really her fault. The rest of the group is rounded out by Joel, played by Brazilian actor Wagner Moura, who provides a lot of the levity to the tense situations throughout the film. The group also brings along rookie photographer Jesse, played by Kaylee Spaney. This is actually one of the film's biggest strengths. Jesse is clearly a naive young journalist who makes some decidedly stupid decisions early on in the film. But through the guidance of Lee, Joel, and Sammy, as well as the harrowing experiences that they all undergo in their journey, she grows into an experienced photographer. This is showcased toward the end of the film when Lee pushes her out of the way of some bullets. When Kirsten Dunst went down, Jesse rose up. This served to symbolize the passing of the torch in this dying breed of an industry. Jesse had finally understood what it meant to be a war photographer and field journalist. She understood how important her role truly is and that without her, the world is somehow less. Civil War is not a war movie at all. It's a road trip movie in the same vein as Heart of Darkness where characters grow from their harrowing experience and learn not only about the world, but about themselves as humans and their place in the world. This is where the film's marketing truly failed. Audiences were expecting Saving Private Ryan and essentially got Heart of Darkness. If you dear viewers decide to watch this film, please don't expect a war movie. Expect a deep introspective on the importance of independent journalism in the context of rapidly shifting geopolitical environments. Is the film actually political? Directly, I would say no. But underneath the surface, the message of the importance of unbiased, raw, and honest journalism is in and of itself a political message. The film does not dive into the politics of Democrat versus Republican at all, save for one line where the Antifa massacre is mentioned. That can also be taken in two ways. Perhaps the massacre was performed by Antifa itself, or it was a massacre of Antifa demonstrators themselves. The film leaves this intentionally vague for the exact reason that I said the film is not overtly political. The film's actual political message was ultimately about the importance of the fourth estate, the media, journalism, and the press. So is A24's Civil War worth seeing? I won't lie, the film is a slow burn that doesn't pick up until the middle of its second act. But you know what other movie was a slow burn that didn't pick up until later? Apocalypse Now! Civil War teaches us a very important lesson that I think everyone should check out. I would also suggest seeing this movie in theaters because the cinematography is absolutely stellar. There's some amazing shots. It's definitely a movie that lends itself well to the big screen. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you enjoy Civil War? And more importantly, did you understand the themes it tried to show? 
please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.